kind of one of the trickiest relationships you have on a movie because with any other aspect of filmmaking, with the script or with the cinematography, everybody has an opinion that they can articulate. That joke isn't funny, that there's too bright, it's too dark. But with music, you're talking about things that are emotional and sort of abstract. And you're trying to express some feeling to someone who has their own feelings about the thing. Or, or more accurately, they have their own feelings about how much they're succeeding in expressing what you're talking about. So it can be, it can be incredibly sort of, you know, you can, you can send someone back to do something again and then feel like, well, hmm, that wasn't exactly what I meant either. And you can look at your composer and you can see him going, oh, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, you don't know, you don't have the foggiest idea what you want, do you? And, and you sort of, and sort of, it's a process of going back and forth and, and, and you hopefully, you know, out of a, you know, sort of, you find a language by which to speak about music and about ideas and themes, but, but it's, I think it's a fraught thing. It, it can get kind of, you know, intense. I've been doing this a long time and it's still, I'm always learning new things because every person you work with is different and you have to develop a new relationship. So for me, even if we went out to dinner or we go to a movie or anything or talk about the weather, I'm learning more about this person and I'm coming, you know, I feel like I have to get into their head a little bit because it might, a word that you say might mean one thing to me and something completely different to you. And, and so, you know, the process of throwing ideas at them and seeing which ones stick finding your vocabulary, finding what you're going to, you know, I, I really believe strongly you just find what works and build on the ideas that are working so that you don't waste, I, I used to like spot the film and then just start writing. But now I really make them come back and really get the opening right in the first maybe 15 minutes so that we go back and forth and back and forth and pretty soon I'm starting to know them, they're knowing me, they know how to talk to me, I know what they're going to probably like or how far I can push like maybe you like this better, you know. So it's that first initial contact. I, I, I don't even want to move beyond 15 minutes until we have ideas that everybody's liking. To me, unless you have a really good established relationship, and even then so, I always make them come to the studio. Because I think what it does is, I think iTunes has really screwed all of us as composers because no one really understands how we do what we do. And when they've said, oh, just bring your cues over, we'll drop them in the avid and we'll watch them in the editing room. They literally think that I pulled CDs off of my shelf, brought them in, said, does this work, does this work? If they come over and they see that you have to start from scratch, you have to sit and think of an idea, sit at your piano, they see the process, they appreciate it more. And it's really, it becomes more of a, you engage them in your process. And I also find it incredibly um, interesting that a director will always say, I don't know how to talk about music. I don't, I don't know anything about music. And I'm like, but you don't, you, are you an actor? No. Well, you talk to actors. You tell them what you want in the scene. Just tell me what you want in the scene. And once you have that dialogue, it doesn't matter if it's a flute or a C minor diminished. That's not even a real chord. Um, <laughs> just in case this is on YouTube, I realize it's not a real chord. But I also was rejected from music school, so. <laughs> but I, I encourage that process because you're just, we're either a writer or, a, or an actor. We're just trying to tell the story. So make them come over and make them see how you do it and, and, and be involved in the process. I mean, let them touch the keyboards. Yeah, uh, just the... <laughs> No, I, have a, I do have a producer knob in my studio that goes to nothing, but all of us do. <laughs> I, I often work with films at like assembly stage. And I think that there's something really great about having that sort of depth and length of a relationship with the creative project. But there's also something that's really fantastic about just coming in at the end and you're the fresh eyes and the fresh ears. We were working on the first cue in the movie the day I had to, had to hand it over to this, the sound mixer. And you know, we were making big changes, but I felt 100% confident that we were making good choices because we had you know, had sort of a depth of understanding about what we were trying to do and what was actually happening with the music in the movie. The reason I actually was hesitant about working with Todd, it wasn't, I loved his music, it was because I actually, in my first film, had a, a bad experience doing this long distance relationship um, because there was, I would give notes, 
he would send back an MP3 that had been kind of fully realized in his mind, and uh, and then then it would be almost feel like it was too late. And so we did have this disconnect, like as the mu music traveled across the country, it was too late to make change, and, and so things became a little too hardened. Every project has obstacles, and this was one of the obstacles for this one. And I think the measure of what you can do is what you do to get over those obstacles.